Here's an example of the kind of question you want to be able to answer based on the information on that previous slide. In comparing these two reactions, you should first be able to predict, even if you're not told that, that these alcohols reacting with HBr would turn into the corresponding bromide, but they do so at much different rates. And the key to which one occurs faster, which reaction occurs faster, is comparing the difference in structure of the alcohols. And what you need to be able to determine is that alcohol here, A, is uh, a tertiary one. The corresponding alcohol in B is secondary. And again, in these skeletal structures, only the connections to carbons are shown. But this carbon where the OH group, there is also a hydrogen that would be located because we're starting with the octet rule uh, intact. And so with cyclic alcohols, we sometimes have to imagine hydrogens that might not be uh, drawn explicitly. So since tertiary alcohols react faster than secondary ones, uh, that's why we can decide that reaction A would go more quickly. It would require less strenuous conditions. We wouldn't have to heat it as much or as long as we would for the second reaction. That second reaction would still work, but not as easily as that first one. So that methyl group here that's present makes, makes a big difference. In talking about forming carbocations and how fast they form, the fancy name for that overall mechanism is called SN1. Uh, the N is normally capitalized in a subscript, but we just say SN1. And as you can see, the S stands for substitution. Uh, nucleophilic is what the N is about because it's the halogen that is attracted to the positive charge that ends up forming our product. And as it says here, uh, a nucleophile is anything such as a halide ion that uh, is generally negative in charge but it's attracted to positive charge. And in these kind of reactions, it's that positive charge on that carbon that completes that reaction. Um, unimolecular. Uh, this me mechanism uh, is based on the formation of a carbocation, which is a single ion that forms in that second step of the mechanism. That's, again, the bottleneck step, the rate determining step, and that's the key. Uh, we're going to contrast this with a mechanism that's termed SN2 because it involves two molecules coming together uh, in the rate determining step. But for this one, if we can get our excuse me, <laughs> if we can get our carbocation to form, we are home free, so to speak. And these uh, statements summarize what the SN1 is all about. And when conditions favor this mechanism, it's going to in particular be favored when the alcohols are primary, excuse me, secondary and tertiary. Primary alcohols uh, don't react by this mechanism, at least not very fast, because their corresponding carbocations don't form very fast. However, we can use primary alcohols and make substitutions work. Uh, we can use methanol and make substitutions work. It's just that it goes by a different mechanism. And here's the contrasting mechanism to SN1. It's called SN2. If you study that SN1 mechanism, there's not a lot to learn that's new for SN2. In fact, the SN2 mechanism only has two steps, and the first step is exactly the same as the first step in the other mechanism. It's the alcohol becoming protonated, as it's sometimes said, because uh, a hydrogen nucleus is a proton after all. And so uh, we are just adding that extra hydrogen to that oxygen so that we can eventually cause that carbon-oxygen bond to break and form water as a byproduct. And that, again, is a fast step. Here's the difference between the two mechanisms. Here, we don't get a carbocation. The bromide comes in and makes a bond to carbon simultaneously with the carbon-oxygen bond breaking. That's the big difference in the two mechanisms. And that allows this substitution to take place without ever having to put a formal positive charge on that carbon. And so methanol does not have to form what would be a very stable unstable methyl cation.